Hey, what's up guys? Stefan here. So, I've just completed my 30-day free trial of Reason 9.5 and my sabbatical of Logic Pro X. So, which is the better door? Before I attempt to answer that, let's just set the record straight. I do not believe there is a best door. I just believe that the best door is the door you make your best music with. Do you agree? Disagree? Let me know in the comment section below. But in order to find out which door works best for me, I've broken this down into two videos. Part one, where we look at the music creation side of things, and part two, where we look at mixing. Like I said, it's mainly from my perspective, so there are gonna be gaps. I'm not gonna be able to cover everything, just the things that are really important to me. But if you think something's vital, let me know in the comment section below and I can add it to a future video. In the same light, be sure to be down in the comment section below. It's an open forum where your voice can be heard. Let me know if you agree with things or disagree and if I've got something completely wrong. I'm here to learn too and I'm by far not a reason expert. So without further delay, let's get right into it. So the main thing I love about Logic is how clean it looks. It's organized well with a place for everything and everything in its place. With reason, it feels a bit more like organized chaos. Although, admittedly, the more I used it, the more comfortable I became with moving across from screen to screen. But that being said, if you go to a pro music studio or a home studio with loads of outboard gear, you're probably gonna find that that's pretty much organized chaos too. And reason tries to emulate a real studio, so you can see where it comes from. What's cool, however, is that you're able to separate all of Reason's different windows, so sequencer, rack, and mixer, all onto three different full screens. And then you can move between them via the tabs at the top of the screen. Yes, you can separate Logic into individual windows also, but you cannot put all of these into full screen mode. But why is this important? Well, on a Mac, the swipe between windows gesture only works with full screen apps. You want to be able to move fast back and forth between windows. Yes, there are hotkeys to move between these windows, but you cannot argue that the trackpad having a gesture is more intuitive. Another area in which I feel Reason beats Logic in terms of interface is with the rack rear view. Now, some might think this is a bit gimmicky, but in all honesty, this is extremely powerful. You can do similar things in Logic using the environment, but look how uninspiring this looks. At least with this rack view, you can more easily experiment and it's generally a lot more intuitive. And it's not far-fetched to say that it could help you in a real life studio situation. When I was studying, we used to use Reason to understand different aspects like auxiliary sends and so on and so forth. So when we actually went into our studios, we had a general understanding of what we were looking for and how to set these things up. When it comes to customizing the interface, Reason does a pretty okay job in terms of aesthetics with being able to change the color of the interface. Default, blue, and black. But Logic, in my opinion, does a better job of allowing you to customize the control bar, the LCD display, and the toolbar. Fashion over function. You decide which you prefer. Yes, I wish I could change the colors in Logic, but with this, I would have to go with function. I myself personally have different setups for different scenarios in Logic, from production sessions to recording sessions, with different tools and LCD info displayed for each. For me, that coupled with how clean and organized Logic is, means that for the interface round, Logic wins. So the arrange window, or in Reason's case, sequencer, is a vital part of every door. It's where you're laying down your music, it has to be good. Over the years, I've found for the most part, Logic Pro 10's arrange window to be very good. It looks clean and it's modern. I can easily arrange my music and work fast through click zones and shortcuts no problem. And the marquee tool is a beast. I'm also able to use flex pitch from within the arrange window, which I don't really tend to do. And I'm able to use automation, which I use all the time. And both can be hidden with a click of a button. Well, two buttons to be precise. So that's all good. 
But what really has ground my gears over the years is Logic's odd behaviour when it comes to snapping to the grid. Let me know in the comment section below if you've experienced this. I mentioned it in a previous video and many people could relate. If you are suffering from this and having issues when moving your regions around and not having it um, snap completely to the grid, then you can check that video out because I actually have a remedy for that. Anyways, when using Reason 9.5, I quickly realized that Reason didn't suffer from these same problems. It's one of the first things I picked up on actually, and I was delighted. I just started cutting things up for fun. The snap works perfectly. When it comes to recording audio, it pretty much has the same functionality as Logic with comping, pitch editing, and slicing. The only difference is that these features are always on. So once you record, you can just switch between the different screens. Changing timings with the slice edit, tuning issues with the pitch edit, and compiling the best takes in comp edit. You can do all of these things in Logic, no problem. But I really do like the way that everything here is in the same area as the actual region here in Reason. You can almost work systematically from region to region. Compile the best takes, move over, fix the pitch, move over, fix the timing, and then move on to your next region. I think that has a nice workflow about it. Another thing is that I always find myself resizing the editors in Logic, or at least for the piano roll. It would be cool if the whole arrange window became the editor, because it's like, I'm editing, I don't really need to see the arrange window. What's your thoughts on that? Before we move on, I forgot to mention that I love the way that in the comp edit, you can easily change the volume level of each take. This limits the need for automation. When it comes to MIDI, Reason again works very similar to Logic. It has a lot of the same features with dub tracks and groove tracks. We can't really go into all those things right now because there's a lot of depth to those things and I don't want to shortchange them. But again, I really like the interface Reason has here. I like the fact that the sequencer turns into the piano roll here and I think that Logic could really adopt this. It just creates a level of focus. It's not a huge deal, but it's a nice touch. Another thing from Reason's End which I picked up on is the ability to reverse your MIDI or audio regions simply by just right clicking and hitting reverse. I thought that was really cool. It's instant and there's no destructive processing involved. That's pretty cool but in terms of MIDI functionality and processes I feel like Logic still has a bit more. Um, you have the MIDI transform functions that are very powerful which I use pretty much all the time as well. But then there's this customization thing again. And what's funny is that on my initial moving to Reason 9.5 video, I think I say something along the lines that Reason is more customizable. Now I'm starting to think otherwise. Let's take a look at the tracks for example. Logic allows us to configure the track header again, allowing us to display what we'd like to see. This is pretty simple, but I couldn't find it on Reason. Let me know in the comment section below if I've missed something here, but just simple things like having the volume and the pan here, and then being able to add additional things that I feel may be necessary, like locking my track or freezing my tracks. So all in all, both have very strong points. Reason has a reliable arrange window with pretty useful innovations for space management and workflow in comparison to Logic. Logic's main letdown for me is its bugginess at times, but apart from that, it's pretty solid. The marquee tool and click zones being among my favorite features, along with essential utility features like freeze tracks and protect tracks, for me, give Logic the win. Right off the bat, I found that Reason's drum options with the re-drum, which I was very familiar with, and the Kong drum designer, which I was very new to, both blew Logic's Ultra Beats and Drum Machine Designer out of the water. I was making kits with my third party samples with Kong in seconds. Simply drag and drop your samples onto the pads and you're good to go. You can rename the pads and edit each sound via the interface just here. Flip it over and you can do even more creating auxiliary sends and so on and so forth. Yes, you can create your own kits in the Ultra Beat, but not every Logic Pro X user knows how to do this. It isn't that straightforward or self-explanatory. Logic's Drum Machine Designer, however, does allow you to easily drag and drop in your own samples. But for some odd reason, it feels like it needs to hold your hand by adding a thousand audio effects automatically when you create a new kit. 
and suggesting what drum element should go where on each pad. I hate that. Isn't it called Logic Pro? Logic also does this when browsing the main sound library. I always find myself having to remove sends and delete audio effects. Yes, if the audio effect is integral to the sound, like a delay or something, that's fine. But things like EQ and compression, I want to put those things on at the end in my, in my mixing process, you know? Reasons Redrum and Logic's Ultra Beat both have step sequences, but here are some comparative differences. The Ultra Beat goes up to 32 steps with a max resolution of 30 second notes, whereas the Redrum has up to 64 steps with a max resolution of 128 notes. So if you're doing your, your trap stuff, you can do a lot of those high, fast hi-hat stuff a bit more easier in, um, in, in the redrum, especially you're going to be using 64th notes with, those, with trap, definitely. So it's going to be easier to do it inside of the redrum. So if step sequences are your thing, the redrum and reason wins. When it comes to synthesizers, both have a healthy selection. However, I'm not going to go too deeply into this as it's, it's, it's pretty much a whole other video. There's so much to talk about here. But what I will say is that what I find in Logic, I don't really use any other synth other than Alchemy. Not to say the other synthesizers are bad, i.e. the ES2 the un and the ES1, but when you think about it, they hardly have any sounds. It's like they created them and just... They started making sounds and just thought, you know what, forget this. I can't make, I can't be bothered to make any more sounds. Let them make their own sounds. And that's the thing with synthesizers. You know, you want loads of sounds. That's what kind of makes a synthesizer great. Yes, you have the tools to create your own sounds and to tweak sounds, but you want to open up a synthesizer and be inspired by loads of different sounds. And the ES1 and ES2 don't have a lot of those. Alchemy does, but the other synthesizers don't. What I found when I'm using Log uh, Reason, sorry, is that I'm using a load of the, the, the presets from Thor to the Subtractor to Maelstrom. I'm using these sounds because there's so much to choose from. In Logic, I'm only ever using the Alchemy or Native Instruments with Massive, Absinthe, FM8. Those things have loads of presets. For that reason, for me, Reason wins. Both Logic and Reason have MIDI effects, however, Reason calls them players. Logic actually has a wider selection of these, but in my personal opinion, Reason's MIDI effects seem a little more useful. Let's compare Reason's scales and chords and Logic's chord trigger. Logic's chord trigger allows you to pick a chord, let's say a major triad, so that's your basic chord which everyone learns first, and if I press C on my keyboard, it will play a C major chord, C, E, G. If I press D, it will then play a D major chord. Now let's stop right there. If I'm playing in the key of C, when I press D, it should play D minor, not D major. So the notes that play should be D, F, A. Logic's chord trigger doesn't take into consideration what key you're playing in, not adapting to major and minor intervals accordingly. Whereas Reason Scales and Chords does this perfectly. You can even set inversions and play open chords, genres and so much more. Reason's note echo and dual arpeggiators, comparative to Logic's note repeater and arpeggiator, again tell the same story. Both are more detailed and more effective, but we don't have time to go into detail unfortunately. If you want more on Reason's MIDI effects or players, let me know in the comment section below and I can do a video on that. But for me, because of those reasons, Reason clearly wins. So that's it for part one guys, thank you for watching. I know it's a bit cliche, it's a draw, but if you want to find out which door I find best to use, you can find out in part two. Just subscribe and you can be notified when I post that. As always, be down in the comment section below as that's where I will be talking to you guys about things you agree with, disagree with, or things I've got completely wrong. Thanks again for watching. I've been Stefan and as always, happy beat making.